welcome back to another video friends and thanks for watching. Today we will present to you life in pre-colonial Africa. Pre-colonial Africa refers to the period before European colonial powers established control over the continent which began in the late 19th century. During this time, the continent of Africa was home to a diverse range of societies and cultures, each with its history, traditions and ways of life. In the early period of pre-colonial Africa, most societies were organized around kinship and family structures. Trade also played a significant role in pre-colonial Africa, with various trading networks and routes connecting different regions of the continent, as well as linking Africa to the broader world. Religion and belief systems were also an important part of pre-colonial African societies. Without further ado, let's dive into the events that characterize pre-colonial Africa. 1. 5000 BC Pre-Colonial Africa Around 5000 BC, Africa was a continent with diverse populations and cultures, each with their own unique social, economic, and political systems. Various hunter-gatherer societies across the continent included the San in Southern Africa, the Pygmies in Central Africa, and the Hadza in East Africa. The Sahara region, which is now largely desert, was once the fertile grassland and savanna region that supported a range of animal species including elephants, giraffes and antelopes. The people in this region were pastoralists and relied on domesticated animals for their livelihood. In the Nile Valley, the ancient civilization of Egypt was just beginning to emerge with settlements forming along the Nile River. These early Egyptians were farmers who relied on the annual floods of the Nile for their agricultural activities. Further south, in the region that is now known as West Africa, people were developing complex societies with rich cultural traditions. Overall, Africa in 5000 BC was a continent of great diversity, with people living in a variety of environments and pursuing a range of livelihoods. 2. 3100 BC Pre-Colonial Africa Around 3100 BC, Pre-Colonial Africa was home to several civilizations and cultures, each with their own unique characteristics and contributions to African history. Here are some examples. A. Ancient Egypt The civilization of ancient Egypt was established around 3100 BC and lasted for thousands of years. It was located in the northeastern part of Africa, along the Nile River. The ancient Egyptians developed a sophisticated system of writing, architecture, mathematics, and medicine. They, Nubia, Nubia was located in what is now modern-day Sudan and southern Egypt. It was a center of trade and had a thriving culture that developed its own distinct language and writing system. The Nubians were skilled at metalworking and had a strong military. See Carthage. Carthage was a Phoenician colony located in what is now Tunisia. It was a major center of trade and had a powerful navy. The Carthaginians developed their own language and culture and their civilization had a significant impact on the Mediterranean world. 3. 2500 BC Pre-Colonial Africa Around 2500 BC, Pre-Colonial Africa was a diverse continent with many different societies and cultures. Here are a few examples of some of the civilizations and societies that existed during this time. The Ancient Egypt the Ancient Egypt was one of the most prominent civilizations in Africa during this time. The Old Kingdom had already come and gone, and the Middle Kingdom was in full swing. The pharaohs were powerful rulers, and the pyramids were being built as tombs for them. The North Culture The North Culture emerged in what is now Nigeria around 1500 BC, and lasted until around 500 BC. They are known for their terracotta sculptures and ironworking skills. For 300 BC Pre-Colonial Africa Around 300 BC, Africa was a diverse continent with various cultures, languages, and civilizations. Some notable developments that occurred during this time include the Kingdom of Kosh. The Kingdom of Kosh, located in modern-day Sudan, was a powerful civilization that had been around since the 8th century BC. Around 300 BC, the Koshites developed a sophisticated system of irrigation and agriculture, which allowed them to thrive as a major trading power in the region. The Bantu Migration The Bantu people, who originally lived in what is now Cameroon and Nigeria, began migrating south and east around 300 BC. This migration was one of the largest and most significant in human history as it led to the spread of Bantu languages and cultures throughout Central, Eastern, 
and Southern Africa. See Aksum, the Kingdom of Aksum, located in modern day Ethiopia and Eritrea, was a powerful trading state that emerged around 300 BC. The Aksumites developed a written language, minted their own coins, and had a sophisticated system of agriculture and irrigation. They also controlled important trade routes that connected Africa with the Mediterranean world and Asia. 5. Pre-colonial Africa between 500 and 1200 AD. Pre-colonial Africa between 500 and 1200 AD was a time of great change and development across the continent. During this period, many different societies emerged, each with its own unique cultures, political systems, and economic structures. In West Africa, several powerful empires rose to prominence, including the Ghana Empire, the Mali Empire, and the Songhai Empire. These empires were known for their work, which was built on the trade of gold, salt, and other valuable resources. They also had sophisticated systems of government, with rulers who held significant power and influence over their subjects. In East Africa, the Swahili city-states emerged as important centers of trade and commerce. These city-states, which stretched along the coast from Somalia to Mozambique, were heavily influenced by Arab traders and merchants, and they became important hubs for the exchange of goods and ideas between Africa, Arabia, and India. Central and Southern Africa was also home to a wide range of societies and cultures during this period. In the Great Lakes region, powerful kingdoms like the Kingdom of Rwanda and the Kingdom of Burundi emerged, while further south, the Kingdom of Zimbabwe became an important center of trade and agriculture. Throughout the continent, religion played an important role in shaping society and culture. Many African societies were polytheistic, with different gods and goddesses associated with different aspects of life. Islam also spread rapidly across Africa during this period, particularly in West and East Africa, where it was adopted by many ruling elites and became an important part of their political and cultural identities. 6. 1500 AD Pre-Colonial Africa The Kingdom of Congo, also known as the Congo Empire, emerged during this period. It was a pre-colonial African state located in what is now modern-day Angola, Congo, and the Democratic Republic of Congo. It was established in the late 14th century and lasted until the late 19th century when it was dissolved by European colonization. The Kingdom of Congo was a centralized state with a hierarchical political structure ruled by a king. The kingdom's economy was based on agriculture, trade, and mining. The Congo people were skilled farmers, and their primary crops included cassava, maize, and beans. They also traded ivory, gold, and copper with neighboring states and European traders. The Kingdom of Congo was one of the first African states to have contact with European explorers, traders, and missionaries. In the late 15th century, the Portuguese established contact with the kingdom, which led to the introduction of Christianity and the slave trade. The slave trade had a devastating impact on the kingdom's population, and by the 19th century, the kingdom had been weakened by internal divisions and external pressures from European powers. 7. 1600 AD Pre-Colonial Africa The oil empire was a pre-colonial empire that existed in what is now southwestern Nigeria from the 15th century to the 19th century. The empire was founded by the Yoruba people and was known for its military prowess political organization, and cultural achievements. The oil empire was ruled by a king called the Alofi, who was considered to be a semi-divine figure. The economy of the oil empire was based on agriculture, particularly the cultivation of yams and cassava. Trade was also an important part of the economy, and the empire had a network of roads and trade routes that connected it to other parts of West Africa. The oil empire declined in the 18th, and 19th centuries due to internal conflicts and external pressures from European powers. The empire was eventually conquered by the Fulani in the early 19th century, and its power and influence waned. However, the cultural and political legacy of the oil empire has endured, and it remains an important part of the history and identity of the Yoruba people of Nigeria. 8. 1700 AD Pre-Colonial Africa In 1700 AD, Africa, was a continent characterized by diverse cultures, societies, and civilizations. The vast majority of the continent was not yet colonized by European powers, and many pre-colonial kingdoms and empires were thriving. Some of the notable pre-colonial societies 
and civilizations of Africa in 1700 AD included a. The Kingdom of the Homi. It was a powerful West African state that existed from around the 17th century until the late 19th century. The kingdom was located in what is now the modern day country of Benin and it was known for its strong military and its participation in the Atlantic slave trade. The Homi was ruled by a monarchy with the king or over at the top of the social hierarchy. The kingdom was organized into a complex system of caste with different groups of people assigned to different roles in society. The most important of these were the warrior class, known as the Amazons or Mino, who was an all-female fighting force that served as the king's bodyguards and as elite soldiers in battle. The kingdom's economy was based largely on the slave trade, with the Homi becoming a major supplier of slaves to European traders. The kingdom also traded in other goods including textiles, guns, and palm oil. The Homi was known for its religious practices, which included the worship of a pantheon of deities as well as human sacrifice. The practice of human sacrifice was eventually banned by the kingdom's rulers in the 19th century due in part to pressure from European powers. The kingdom's power declined in the 19th century as European powers, particularly the French, began to expand their influence in West Africa. The Homi was eventually annexed by the French in 1894 and became part of French West Africa. Today, the legacy of the Homi is visible on the cultural traditions of the people of Benin, as well as in the legacy of the Amazons, who are still celebrated for their bravery and skill as warriors. They, the Zulu Kingdom. The Zulu Kingdom was a powerful monarchy in Southern Africa that existed from the early 19th century until the late 19th century. It was founded by a Zulu chief named Chaka in the early 1800s, who transformed the Zulu people from a small and relatively unimportant tribe into a formidable military force. Under Chaka's leadership, the Zulu Kingdom expanded through a series of successful military campaigns and conquests incorporating neighboring tribes and expanding its territory. Following Shaka's death in 1828, the Zulu kingdom was ruled by a succession of kings. During this time, the kingdom faced various challenges, including conflicts with European settlers and colonial powers, as well as internal struggles for power and succession. In 1879, the Zulu Kingdom faced its most significant challenge when it went to war against the British Empire in what became known as the Anglo-Zulu War. Despite initial successes on the battlefield, the Zulus were ultimately defeated by the British and the kingdom was absorbed into the British colony of Natal. Today, the legacy of the Zulu Kingdom is celebrated in South Africa and beyond, with the Zulu people remaining a significant cultural group in the region. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you won't miss our next video. You can also add other events of pre-colonial Africa in the comment section.